Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming again for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to this show. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Russ, who's been supporting this channel as a Golden Pig Tier Patron. I truly couldn't do this with the support from amazing patrons like Russ, so again, Russ, thank you so much. And actually, for today's episode, Russ is going to handle the intro for me. Hey Mitch, this is Russ from Colorado Springs. With Mono White being considered by many to be the worst mono color in the format, I'd like you to build around Ellis Norn with a focus on control. So, like Russ said, today we're going to have a control deck built around Elish Norn Grand Cenobite. Elish Norn is a 4-7 Praetor that has Vigilance and costs 5 White White. But of course, that's not all. She has other creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2, and creatures your opponents control get minus 2 minus 2. That is a massive swing. I mean, basically a 4 point difference again, pumping your creatures by 2 and making your opponent's creatures a lot smaller in the meantime. So just by hitting the board, this can make a massive difference. I mean, taking out a ton of small creatures, making your opponent's creatures a lot tinier, and pumping your creatures a lot too. It can turn your army from the smallest army into a force to be reckoned with, and it can wipe your opponent's armies down to next to nothing, or make them, well, pretty weak. So yeah, this is a very powerful commander, and with a control shell built around it, we can do some really cool things. And though Elish Norn is a decently expensive card at around $20 herself, well, the rest of the deck is very budget-friendly, with every single card in it being less than $1. And now with all that said, let's jump into it. So first up, let's talk about ways to actually fill up the board and really take advantage of that fantastic Anthem effect on our commander with cards like Sunset Revelry, Rally for the Throne, and Spectral Procession. Sunset Revelry says, if an opponent has more life than you, you gain 4 life. If an opponent controls more creatures than you, you create 2 one, one white human creature tokens. If an opponent has more cards in hand than you, you draw a card. So on the high end, this card can really help us out, giving us two creatures, four life, and a card to replace this card itself. And then Rally for the Throne says, create two 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens, and on top of that, if we used all white mana to cast this spell, we gain one life for each creature we control. And then Spectre Procession is a sorcery we can cast for white, 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 so just three mana, and we can make three 1-1 one, one white spear creature tokens with flying. So, 3 1 1 flyers for 3 mana is amazing, especially since, again, our commander is a great anthem effect. So, again, for basically 3 mana, we are getting 9 power in total. Speaking of which, let's talk about Sram's Expertise, a sorcery for 2 white white that's going to give us 3 servos that are 1 1s, and it says you may cast a card with converted mana cost 3 or less from hand without paying its mana cost. So, by casting this again, we get 9 power in total with our commander in consideration, and again, on top of that, we get to cast something else from our hand for free. Of course, we can make even more tokens, though, with Increasing Devotion, which is going to give us 5 one, one white human creature tokens, and if we flashed it back, well, we get 10 instead. That is an incredible amount of power from one card, again, in combination with our Commander's Anthem. Speaking of which, there's Conqueror's Pledge, which is going to give us 6 one, one white core creature tokens onto the battlefield, and if we kicked it by, you know, kicking it for 6, we get 12 instead. But of course, we're not quite done with ways to build our army just yet. So next up, let's move on and talk about Decree of Justice, which is going to give us X-4-4 white angel creature tokens with flying, or we can cycle for two and a white, and when we do, we can pay X and make X-1-1 white soldier creature tokens. So we can either make a few angels, which again are going to be six sixes with our commander in play, and yeah, flying, and yeah, be able to hit for a ton, or we can make a lot of tokens out of nowhere, again by cycling this at instant speed and making a ton of 1-1s, which are now going to be three threes. And speaking of instant speed tokens, how about White Sun Zenith, which is going to give us X-2-2 white cat creature tokens, and we shuffle this back into our library. So this can be a fantastic combat trick actually in its own right, just being able to cast it and get basically a bunch of 4-4s four into play out of nowhere. And again, our commander, you know, subtracting from our opponent's creatures, 
uh, we're going to have probably the biggest creatures out there. And then Visions of Glory is a sorcery for four and a white, and it's going to give us a 1-1 one, one white human creature token for each creature we control. On top of that, we can flash it back for eight white white, but it's going to cost X less to cast Rex, the greatest mana cost of a commander that we have. So yeah, that's going to be what? Minus seven? So this just costs three mana to flash back. So we can essentially double up the number of creatures that we have and then double that up again. And again, keep in mind with our commander, these are three threes. Speaking of doubling creatures, we've got Nomad's Assembly, which is very similar. It's going to give us a 1-1 white core creature token on the battlefield for each creature we control, and it rebounds. So essentially, we cast it again for free at the beginning of our next upkeep. Next up, there's Reverent Hoplite, which has, when it enters the battlefield, creating a number of 1-1 white human creature tokens equal to our devotion to white. And Evangel of Heliod essentially does the exact same thing. When it enters the battlefield, we get a number of 1-1 white soldier creature tokens equal to our devotion to white. And next up, we've got what can be a fantastic finisher with Storm Herd. It's going to give us X11 white Pegasus creature tokens with flying, where X is our life total. So, yeah, that can definitely be a game ending play, especially when our commander is turning those 1 1s into 3 3s. Next up, we also have some creatures that can help us out in other ways with Geist, Honor, Monk, and Captain of the Watch. Geist, Honor, Monk has Vigilance, and its power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures we control. On top of that, when it enters the battlefield, we're going to get two 1 1 white spear creature tokens with flying. So again, our commander is going to pump those flyers and Geist Hunter Monks, so we've got two 3-3s three with flying and an even bigger giant Geist Hunter Monk that has Vigilance. Yeah, this thing can hit really hard. Speaking of which, Captain of the Watch is a 3-3 three, three with Vigilance, and it says other soldier creatures you control get plus plus one and have Vigilance. Of course, on top of that, when it enters the battlefield, we get three 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. So again, in combination with our commander, this is a 5-5 five, five with Vigilance that makes three other essential 4-4s four, with Vigilance, and again, on top of that, we've got other ways to make soldiers too, so this actually pumps them as well. Now, as good as that is, there's still one card, in my opinion, that stands well above the rest as the Golden Pig of this deck. So the Golden Pig of this deck, the number one card out of our 99, is Harmonious Archon. Harmonious Archon is a 4-5 Archon with flying that costs 4 white white. It says non-Archon creatures have base power and toughness 3-3, and when it enters the battlefield, we get two 1-1 white human creature tokens. So, this card is absolutely incredible with Elish Nord. First up, and let me just mention this, Archon is not a very common creature type, and you're probably not going to see anyone else with an Archon in play. So, every single creature outside of this one is going to be a 3-3. The vast majority of creatures that you make in this deck are just 1-1s, one -one, so this basically bumps them up to 3-3s three on its own. So, that's basically like an Anthem for plus 2, plus 2 right there. And of course, your commander is going to be pumping them even further, essentially making them into 5-5s. Five and of course, the reverse of this is true, where your opponent's creatures are now all 3-3s, three but Elish Nord is going to give them minus 2, minus 2. So while all of your creatures are essentially now 5-5s, five all of your opponent's creatures are now 1-1s. One yeah, that can be an incredible play and can really turn the tides on your opponents. Especially since this also brings in two one ones, which again are essentially five fives. So again, in combination with Elishnorn, this is basically a six seven flyer that makes all of your creatures into five fives. It gives you two of those creatures, and it makes all of your opponent's creatures into one ones. Yeah, there are plenty of reasons that this is the golden pig of this deck. Moving on though, let's talk about some other cards that can help us with controlling the board with things like Martial Coop, Hour of Reckoning, and Mass Calcify. Marshall Coop says create X11 white soldier creature tokens if X is 5 or more destroy all other creatures. So this can make us creatures, and if we spend enough on it and we want to, well, we can just wipe out the board while making creatures. And then Hour of Reckoning is somewhat of a one-sided board wipe. It's a convoke spell that costs 4 white, 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 and it says destroy all non-token creatures. Again, we can make a ton of tokens with this deck, so, well, just wipe the board, keep all your tokens in play, and have some fun. Speaking of one-sided board wipes, though, an even more effective one might be Mass Calcify. It says destroy all non-white creatures, so again, we basically keep all of our creatures in play, and if our opponents don't have any white creatures, well, all their creatures are gone. So this one can actually keep our tokens in play as well as Elish Norn, which is huge. But of course, we're running even more board wipes with this control style build with cards like Route, Never Rolls Disc, Slash the Ranks, Rex and Rebirth, Acroma's Vengeance, and Hour of Reckoning. Each of these can really help us out in a lot of situations. And speaking of helping us out, let's talk about some targeted removal with Cathar Commando. It's a 3-1 human soldier with flash that costs 1 and a white, and it has pay 1, sacrifice Cathar Commando, destroy target artifact, or enchantment. So again, in combination with our commander, this is basically a 5-3 with flash for just 2 mana, that also if we need to, we can pay 1 to sack it, destroy an artifact, or an enchantment. So this can be a fantastic combat trick as a blocker, and or a way to actually take something out when needed. And speaking of taking things out, of course we've got plenty of ways to do so with things like Dark Seal Mutation, Crush Contraband, Forsake the Worldly, Return to Dust, Disenchant, Abolish, and Oblation, and... Now I'm out of breath. But yeah, on top of throwing a wrench into our opponent's plans by taking out their things, we can also throw a wrench into their plans by protecting our own with things like Brave the Elements and Lapse of Certainty. 
Brave the Elements is an instant that just costs a single mana, and it says choose a color, white creatures you control gain protection from the chosen color until end of turn. So this can essentially protect our entire team for just one mana, and yeah, that can also be a great way to get them through. And then Lapse of Certainty is a very interesting card in white that says counter target spell, if that spell is countered this way, put it on top of its owner's library instead of into that player's graveyard. So this is kind of like a delayed counter spell, and yeah, it can be very unexpected in a lot of scenarios. And speaking of unexpected, we can also utilize some cards to protect our entire team during some board wipes, maybe even some of our own, with cards like Rootborn Defenses, Make a Stand, and Unbreakable Formation. Rootborn Defenses says populate creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. So on top of protecting our creatures, this actually gets another token copy of one of our tokens. And then Make a Stand says creatures you control get plus one plus zero until end of turn and gain indestructible until end of turn. So this protects our creatures and helps pump them as well. Speaking of which, Unbreakable Formation is going to give our creatures indestructible, and if we cast it during our main phase, we get a plus one counter on each of our creatures, and they gain Vigilance until end of turn. So this can pump our creatures permanently and help them swing out as well. And to draw into all these great cards, we can utilize cards like Mentor the Meek and Sandstone Oracle. Mentor the Meek says whenever the creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under control, you may pay one if you do draw a card. So while building up our board and before getting Elish Norn in play, we can heavily utilize this to take advantage of our small creatures getting into play and drawing a ton of cards. Or if our creatures in Elish Norn is dealt with, well, we can utilize this to draw more cards to help build back our hand before building back our board and getting Elish Norn back in play. And speaking of building back our hand, how about Sandstorm Oracle, which has, when it enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. If that player has more cards in hand than you, draw cards equal to the difference. Yeah, in a mono-white deck, chances are we're going to have less cards in our hand than our opponent, so we can gain back a lot of cards with this very quickly. And on top of that, with Elish Norn against a 6-6 Flyer. Next up, we can also utilize cards like Secret Rendezvous, Pendant Prosperity, and Farsight Mask. Secret Rendezvous is going to draw us three cards and target opponent three cards as well. So with this, we might be able to make a deal with an opponent to actually incentivize them to do what we want. Speaking of which, Pen of Prosperity has, when it enters the battlefield, it's going to enter under the control of an opponent of our choice. Then they can pay two and tap to draw a card and put a land card from their hand on the battlefield, and then we get to do the same. And then Farsight Mask benefits us from our opponents doing other things. It's an artifact that says whenever a source and opponent controls deals damage to you, if Farsight Mask is untapped, you may draw a card. So if our opponents do decide to swing at us and actually dish out some damage to us, well, we can draw a good amount of cards with this. We can also draw in other ways, though, with Lore Seeker Stone, Seer Sundial, and Eye of Vecna. Lore Seeker Stone has pay three, draw three cards, spill to cost one more to activate for each card in your hand. Seer Sundial has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under control, you may pay two if you do draw a card. And Eye of Vecna has when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and lose two life. And on top of that, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay two if you do draw a card and lose two life. So each of these are more kind of conditional ways to draw, and we did the pay for them. But again, we're in mono white, so we will take with what we can get. Speaking of which, we're also going to be utilizing cards like Illuminated Folio, a messy tome, and Arcane Encyclopedia. Illuminated Folio has pay one, tap reveal two cards from your hand that cherry color, draw a card. A messy tome has pay five and tap, draw two cards, then discard a card. In Arcane Encyclopedia has pay three and tap, draw a card. So each of these are repeatable ways for us to draw throughout the game. Moving on though, we actually have some creatures that can help us ramp, and actually, you know, just get pumped by our commander while they are in play with cards like Neither White Orchid, Burnished Heart, and Solemn Simulacrum. Neither White Orchid is a 2-2 with First Strike, which again is going to be a 4-4 with our commander, which is huge, and when it enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than us, we can search our library for a planes, put on the battlefield, then shuffle. And then Burnished Heart has pay 3, sack it, search your library for up to 2 basic land cards, put them on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. And Sad Robot can also get us a land when it enters the battlefield, we can get a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle, and on top of that, when it dies, we can draw a card. And of course, outside of these creatures, we also have some other ways to ramp with cards like Ebony Fly, Mindstone, Marble Diamond, Forsak Lens, Palladium Mirror, Everflowing Chalice, Guardian Isle, Sisters Ring, Dreamstone, Hedron, and Hedron Archive. And that was quite the mouthful. But now that I have gone through every single non lane card in this deck, let's talk about the price. Again, even with Elshorn's high price tag at around $20, this deck is still pretty budget friendly with an estimated cost of $45. So outside of the commander, yeah, the rest of the deck just costs $25. And keep in mind that that also includes basic lands at 10 cents a piece, so if you already have those planes, well, you've got some extra savings there. And speaking of potential extra savings, well, you might be able to save even more if you buy this deck on TCG Player and utilize heavily played and damaged cards, which of course need a home too. Though do keep in mind that the estimated cost for this deck does not include the price of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.